I just got back from a long trip down in Arkansas on the Ozark Highlands Trail. So what gear was good, what gear was terrible? Let's find out. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Rob with our Pelton One. Thanks for tuning in, I greatly appreciate it. Today I'm going over some of the gear that I use on the Ozark Highlands Trail. I did a video series on that and if you want to check out that whole video series, I'll leave a link right up there, so be sure to check that out. Some of the gear stuff worked really well. There were some gear triumphs, which means there were some really big gear failures as well. So I'm gonna go through some of these things, give you my quick little thoughts. So if you're new here, subscribe right down there so you don't miss any of the videos that I have coming up. If you have seen the video series of the Ozark Highlands Trail, you'll notice kind of a theme that eventually took me off trail. Spoiler alert, it was a blister. A lot of people ask me if the footwear, my footwear choice was the big contributing factor. Yes and no. This year I decided to pick up the Ultra Temp 2 shoes. I did a lot of research on them, I did some training runs in them. This is a fantastic shoe. The training runs I did with these were fantastic. I got no hot spots, nothing like that. These things performed very, very well. From the traction, from the drainage, an awesome, sh an awesome shoe. Here was my downfall. The night before I left for the Ozark Highlands Trail trip, the very night before, I picked up the Superfeet insoles. I stuck them in my shoe and I thought that was a good idea just to go walk 100 miles. That was a bad idea. Not training in this combo led to me getting off trail early and I hated that. Now these insoles are awesome. These shoes are awesome. Together for the first time without training, not awesome. Continuing with footwear, I'm also a big fan of camp shoes. I love kicking off my shoes after a long day on the trail and putting on something a little bit more comfy on my feet. I picked up these Packham's camp shoe. They're kind of a collapsible slip-on shoe. They're waterproof, they got a good sole on them. They pack down really small and they weigh one pound. These worked out great. After I had to deal with my blister stuff, I wore these for the rest of the trip and they worked really, really well. My idea was to replace my Crocs, my tried and true Crocs. I love these things. They weigh exactly the same. A pound for a pair, a pound for a pair. These are a little bit more bulky. These are a lot easier to carry. What am I gonna go with? I'm gonna go back to my Crocs. They're just too damn comfortable. They do take up a little bit more room in my pack, but as far as comfort goes, these are so much more comfortable. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet. We shall see, but the Crocs went out over the Packhams. Sorry, Packhams. Moving over to some more apparel items. Early in the mornings when it's cool out and you're just getting going on the trail, my ears get a little cold and I hike with this beanie. It's a lightweight alpaca wool beanie made by the Appalachian Gear Company. Where's the logo? Appalachian Gear Company. This is the Outdoor Evolution version of it. This is lightweight. It keeps the chill off my head while not allowing me to get too hot. While I'm actively hiking, I love wearing this thing in the morning. And later on in the day when it gets warm out, I take this off and I break out my Outdoor Research Swift Cap. This hat is fantastic. I sweat a lot when I'm on trail, going up and down hills, you know, I, I sweat. And sweat sometimes builds up in my hats and the sweat ends up dripping down into my face, which is super annoying. This hat with all its ventilation keeps that moisture suspended long enough for it to evaporate off my head so I get none of that run down into my face, which is super annoying. This hat is awesome. Spray it with some permethrin, bugs won't bother you. It keeps the sun out of your eyes, keeps the rain out of your eyes. This is a fantastic hat. So if you have those issues with the sweat and stuff like that, pick up this hat. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite pieces of gear. Let's talk stoves. Sometimes I use a BRS canister stove. If you don't know what that is, I did a kind of a review of that thingy right up there. But sometimes I use a Fancy Feast alcohol stove. For this last trip, I ended up going with the Fancy Feast stove. Now this is a DIY stove made out of a Fancy Feast cat food can, tomato paste can. These are fantastic stoves. 
but I ended up using a new fuel bottle from Vargo. The little flip top allows you to squirt exactly an ounce and you can measure it. This worked out really, really well. Holds eight ounces is all I needed. This is super lightweight, very effective at boiling water. But the cool part is, is this nests into there. It's fancy, right? This is a cool fuel bottle, buy one. Another new piece of gear that I thought was a great idea for trail was this Rology cork ball. It's about the size of a tennis ball, but it's designed to help roll out tight spots, shoulders, or maybe even in your hips, and more importantly, to roll out your feet. Because you know you do 10, 15 miles on trail, your feet get a little sore. Love the concept, and it's very effective. However, using this thing on trail doesn't work. You lay on it, it sinks in the mud. You try to roll out your feet, it sinks in the mud. You try to lean against a tree to help roll it. This skips out, rolls in the mud. Very cool in, in, in theory, doesn't work on trail. Sorry. This thing is amazing. It's the hang time hook. This thing's only purpose for me is to hold a phone. You put your phone right in here, it hangs above you on the ridge line on your hammock and you can watch movies. It helps prevent my hands from falling asleep from just sitting there in my hammock and holding my phone. This can suspend right above me. I watch The Stranger. It's a Netflix show. Awesome show. Watch it if you're bored and you're in quarantine and you can't go anywhere. Watch The Stranger. Great show. This thing, it doesn't weigh anything. It's a little bulky in my pack, but not, not crazy. But this is well worth carrying for me because I like watching shows movies while I'm on trail, relaxing in my hammock. The hang time hook, awesome. Water filtration, I moved from the Sawyer Squeeze to the Katadin, 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 Bee Free Water Filter. This is the three liter bag. They also make a one liter bag. This thing is it's just amazing. This is the filter unit. Very, very easy to maintain in the field. Nice big opening, especially with running water. This fills up in no time. Screw your filter on, filter your water good to go. This is a great filter and it's fast. One little thing that I always seem to like on trail is information. I like to know how cold it got last night. So I use this Accurite thermometer. It records the record high and the record low for that 24 hour period. I clip this onto my ridge line. I actually took this apart and just put this little S beater on it. It tells me how cold it got last night. That way I can weigh the temperature versus the gear that I used. How warm did my gear keep me at that temperature? I love information. A little accurate thermometer. I don't know, I just love this thing. It's stupid, but I like it. Medical stuff. I needed my medical kit on this trip for a couple of different reasons. I keep it in this op sack, lock sack, with a little sticker on there. I had to use the tenacious tape because I poked a hole in my tarp, but that helped a lot. But more importantly, I use Luco tape and moleskin for a mother of a blister that I had on my right heel. What I do wish I had in here, quite frankly, was some more Band-Aids. I carry big Band-Aids in here, like big, big bandages. I usually only carry two. I wish I would have had more just for changing out the dressings. So I need to bump up and, and rethink my first aid kit. Um, if you haven't done so, Look at your first aid kit. It's something that you don't use very often, but when you do need it, it's nice to have those extra things in here. So, glad I had it, wish I had more in it. One really cool thing about the Ozark Highlands Trail, the campgrounds there, is a lot of the campgrounds have these big flat rocks that people have fashioned into these little chairs, into these little recliners around the fire pit. I learned that last year. So this year, I did not bring my camp chair, my Helinox Chair Zero. I ended up taking just the Thermarest Z seat. Insulates you from the cold rock, the wet logs, anything you're gonna sit on, and it weighs practically nothing. Strap this on the outside of your pack so when you stop for lunch, you stop anywhere you need to sit down. This can come off very easily, sit on it, and it insulates your tushy. This is quickly becoming a staple in my pack if I'm not gonna bring a chair. This was the first big trip that I used my new bear bag, my bear kit. This one is made by Hilltop Packs, Ben McMillan. These are popping up everywhere. They're a thicker Dyneema material. Dyneema is a, is a Cuban fiber something, something, something. It's a very light, tough, waterproof material. Now this, I hung every night because my food was in it, but even in the rain, my food did not get wet. And the cool part is, I can find it easily. It's got my darn name on it. <clears throat> now Ben, if you're watching, 
and, and I hope you are, if you make a bigger one, I could use a bigger one for like a week's worth of food. Let me know. And to go along with a bear hanging kit is this bear hanging line. Now, this is not paracord. This is not spectra. This is not dyneema cord. This is some kind of arborist line. I got this from Gossamer Gear. It's a waxy coated line. You know, it came, comes with a little carabiner. The cool part about this line is that waxy coating glides along branches and bark so much easier. The friction is less. When you're trying to pull up five, six, seven, eight pounds of food on a branch, that friction on the line can make it harder. Something as stupid as waxy bear line makes a hell of a difference. Something that's silly and you don't realize it's an issue until you have something that fixes the issue. I love this stuff. One thing I have struggled with so much on trail is using trekking poles. I film a lot, so my hands are always occupied. I'm always using a tripod and, and, and using trekking poles while trying to film and trying to figure out the logistics on how to carry what and this and how was a giant pain in the ass for me. I figured out how to do it on this trip and it worked pretty well. My last pair of hiking poles, they're just like some Kelty beginner poles. I broke them which was probably a good thing because I ended up going with these Amazon ordered Cascade Mountain Tech carbon fiber trekking poles. These are amazing. They really are. They're very light. I think they weigh, I don't know, seven ounces a piece or something. These saved my ass on the trail from slippery boulders to water crossings to down hills. Trekking poles are amazing when you're actually trekking. And these, especially, Highest rated trekking pole on Amazon. If you haven't used a trekking pole or are looking for a good affordable option, this is fantastic, especially for the price. I'm a trekking pole guy now. I never thought I'd say it. These are awesome. The very last thing is my brand new ULA circuit backpack. This was the first big trip that I used this pack on. I did some training runs with it. It carried really, really well. And the nice part is, it's a 68 liter capacity. I mean, you can get all that in there. And I used it because of all the food that I carried on this trip. Now the material is an X-Pack, an X21 material. What is that? It's a waterproof material that doesn't absorb water, but that doesn't make this pack waterproof. The seams aren't taped or sealed. So on the rainy day on the trip, I got some stuff that was wet inside. I'm thinking about maybe sealing it, but it carried phenomenally well. It distributed the weight of my pack, which is right about 27, 28 pounds. It brought the weight to my hips very well with the hip belts, large, generous hip belt pockets, big, generous water bottle side pockets where I kept my stove and my and, and, and the hammock supplies, things like that. The cool part is, is the giant meshy pocket on the back. This is like the junk drawer your rain gear, poop kit, snacks, hats, socks, anything can just go in this outer pocket. When I had a wet tarp on the rainy day, once I broke it down, I threw it in the back here. It kept most of the things inside the pack dry. This meshy pocket is awesome. This pack I had custom made for me. I'm gonna do a full in-depth review of this pack and the process I went through to get it, you know, cause I picked the materials and the colors and I worked with a specific guy to get this done, and I'm gonna have all that information coming up very soon. But the ULA circuit, it's a fantastic pack. It really is. Those are some of the gear items that did really well and not so well on this trip. Those are some of the noteworthy ones. If you have any questions about any of these items, leave those questions down in the comment area. I read all the comments, I read all the questions, and I answer as many as I can. So leave your two cents right down there. Appreciate you watching. I hope you can get outside sooner rather than later. You know, if you're not quarantined, at least try to get on a day hike if you can. Just avoid people. That's what they keep telling you. Avoid people. But I hope you're not going stir crazy. I appreciate you watching and uh, let's hope that we can get on trail sooner rather than later. Appreciate you watching. Catch you on the next one.